Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tony and today I'll tell you everything you need to know before buying Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee. Pokemon Let's Go is a JRPG game developed by Game Freak and published by the Pokemon Company with Nintendo, thus being an exclusive game for Nintendo Switch. When this game was announced, Pokemon fans were divided, because the formula would change so much and the initial proposal was to appeal more to casual fans, fans who played only the mobile game Pokemon Go and thus the catching and evolution mechanics would be somewhat simplified. I was one of those fans. I was afraid. Did I change my mind? The first thing we need to understand is that Pokemon Let's Go is a remake of Pokemon Yellow, meaning the adventure takes place in Kanto and basically we only have access to the first 150 Pokemon, with some minor exceptions. But still, the game changes the scripts a little bit to be able to surprise old fans and not just be a repetition of a story already told several times. Right at the beginning, we see one of the biggest differences in the game. Your rival is not Gary or Blue, he's not an arrogant bastard full of himself who is sure that he'll beat you. Here, he really is your friend and often shows that he admires you and that he's impressed as you more and more evolve at Pokemon training. But other than that, your encounters are pretty much in the same place that they were in Pokemon Yellow. I really dislike this trend of making your rival cutesy friends. When it was Blue or the Pokemon Gold Silver rival, I felt a lot more motivation and satisfaction to defeat them every time we met, but that's just my personal taste. As expected, unlike the other Pokemon games, here you can't choose your initial Pokemon, instead the Pokemon chooses you. If you are playing the Pikachu version, you start with Pikachu, and if you're playing the Eevee version, you start with an Eevee, so choose what you identify the most and go ahead. I personally chose the Pikachu version for nostalgia reasons. And so your adventure begins. You get the Pokedex from Professor Oak with the mission to capture all 150 Kanto Pokemons and in the middle of the path defeat 8 gyms and beat the Elite Four. The first thing I want to say is that this is the second Nintendo exclusive game that I buy that does not allow you to play with Switch's Pro Control, the other one being Mario Party. I understand wanting to use movement to control your game, but as soon as you make your exclusive game unable to use your pricey Pro Controller, I don't know, it totally loses its value. I was really upset about it twice in a row. But anyway, let's carry on. As the new trainer in Kanto, you can choose to be a girl or a guy, with a few different skin color options. Like in the last games, you can move freely on the map, being able to move in the 8 directions, but without any vertical movement. And for me, that had so little contact with the 3DS games, it was a delight to play from start to finish. It is worth noting that you don't earn a bike in this version, but you can mount a variety of different Pokemon. It was so many games that you only moved in 4 directions, that this differential helped a lot in the fresh game sensation, for someone like me at least. The biggest difference between this title and the other Pokemon games is how you find and face wild Pokemon. Gone are the days where you met wild Pokemon walking the high grass in between travel routes, the cave floor or just surfing around. Now you can see all the Pokemon available in that area moving around and to get the chance to catch it, you just walk over them. Where a battle will take place, it's now simply a catch screen. Pretty much a remnant of Pokemon Go, where you have a few simple options. You can look at your bag where you will get access to different types of Pokeball, from the regular simple Pokeball to the Master Ball. 
and is also where you get access to different berries that are there to help you capture Pokémon in different ways, or even help you find rare items. Decided which Pokéball you use, whether or not to throw some berry to the Pokémon begins the capture. You need to use the Joy-Con movement controls or the special Pokéball you can buy as a controller to launch Pokéballs in the direction of the Pokémon, where you have a little circle always closing, identical to Pokémon Go. Hitting within the circle increases the chances of catching it, and the smaller the circle is, the better your shot will be. And that's it. No need to worry about battling, putting to sleep, leaving the ATP low. Just throw some Pokeballs in hope to capture, or hope that the Pokemon does not run away. This, of course, was the biggest restraint points among fans, and I was pretty sad about the change. <laughs> Even though I know this is not the big Switch Pokemon game, but a new franchise, but I have to say, it's not as bad as it sounds. The sixth Pokemon in your team gain experience when a Pokemon is captured, greatly reducing the grind. I actually didn't even have to grind at any point in the game, I went from beginning to end simply by following the story and capturing the new Pokemon I saw along the way. Time and time again you feel the difficulty of the levels hitting you, but at no time I felt that was unfair. In addition, you are encouraged to catch several of the same Pokemon for a few reasons. The first is that there are some items and places that you can only obtain or enter after you have captured some amount of Pokémon, the same species or otherwise. Secondly, there is now a new method to hunt shiny Pokémon, Pokémon of different colors, and Pokémon with good IVs, IV meaning individual value, which indicates the potential of your Pokémon, which is the combo system. You combo by capturing the same type of Pokémon one after the other, without capturing any different Pokémon between them. So you end up leveling your team without realizing it if you choose to do this. I didn't do it, but I've seen some absurd cases. And finally, send Pokémon to Professor Oak rewards you with candy which can be used to improve the stats of your Pokémons, making them even stronger. So in the end, it's a system that works, makes catching Pokémon a little different and new compared to the classic methods. But ok, let's be honest, this is not my ideal Pokémon game, but it's much better than it had any right to be. But if you prefer the old school method, there are some Pokémon that you need to battle before you can catch them. It's still not the same but it is a nice compromise. The battles against the trainers are sensational. I've never seen such a beautiful Pokemon game. The gym leaders are very well represented and recognizable, with remodeled gyms that embrace and expand the theme of the original games. All the characters are very well made and incredible, with some additions that are exclusive to Pokemon Let's Go that didn't exist in Pokemon Yellow. Other than that, we also have a new post game that was not present in the classic games, but I don't think that it is that cool, although it was fun for a few hours, but I will not spoil the surprise. As I already said, the graphics are very beautiful, I've never seen such a beautiful Pokemon game before. The effects, battles, cities and especially the Pokemons were very well done and full of details. The sound design is sensational. For me, who played the original games in the original Game Boy, listening to the songs and sound effects remastered for this version was simply amazing. I had a giant smile on my face every time I heard some familiar music totally redone for this version. If I have something to complain about it, is this. Because this is a console game costing a full price game. I expected at least the main characters to have some voice acting, but that didn't diminish my experience with the game at all. Something important to add is that the game has a connectivity function with Pokemon Go. You can transfer Pokemons from your cell phone via the Pokemon Go Park, which enters in the Safari Zone place. I didn't test the functionality because my cell phone was a piece of poop, so I'm going to owe you a better evaluation of the functionality, okay? I'm sorry, I could not test that.
I love Pokémon since I was a kid. I was a fan of the anime when it first came out here in Brazil. I played hundreds of hours of the first games, red, blue, yellow, gold, silver, and ruby and sapphire, but unfortunately I was out of touch with Pokémon for many years, losing almost every release since then. So having a full Pokemon game on a real console is simply fantastic and I dream of every child of the 90s. It may not be the game we've been waiting for, but it's undoubtedly much more fun than many people thought it would be, including me. But if you're not convinced that it's worth giving the game a chance, Nintendo has already said that it will launch the games that you are expecting in 2019. For me, it was a retelling of a story that I already know backwards, in a refreshing and innovative way. So my final score for the game is a nostalgic 7 out of 10. The game is very well done, I recommend to everyone who likes or ever liked Pokemon before. But the fact that it is a simplified version to attract new people prevents it from being a real masterpiece. Remember, here we use 5 as average, so 7 it's a very good game. And that's it, that was my review of Pokemon Let's Go for Nintendo Switch. Hit the like if you like, it helps the channel a lot, follow me on Twitter so we can have a nice chat and if today is your birthday. Have a happy birthday and in case I don't see you, good morning, good afternoon and good night.